Hey, hello there. Uh, my name's Joe Luxton. I'm a designer at Build, and for the next five minutes, I will be your tutor. Um, so today we're going to learn a bit about one of the exciting features of InDesign, clipping path options. The clipping path is a pretty useful tool for cutting out objects from an image to place in InDesign. And in some cases, it's going to reduce the amount of time and effort you have to spend by quite a lot. Um, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to use it for different types of images. First, I'll use a uh, pretty simple shape, um, and then I'll show you with, with a bit more of a complex photo. So, first thing I'm going to do is place in my shape. I've got a QR code for you. There we go. And uh, first thing you'll notice is that it's got this ugly white box around it, and I don't want that. I want it on the nice pink background. So, one thing I could do is go into Illustrator, place it in, trace it, copy and paste it out, and I'd have a nice vector. But that's going to take a little bit of time. I don't have much time. I'm a very busy man. So, instead, I will show you how to use it when, uh, with just a few clicks of the mouse. So, first off, highlight it. Then we'll go up to the Object menu, find Clipping Path, and click on Options. Here we go. First thing you want to do is make sure you've got the Preview button checked, otherwise you're in a world of trouble. So, click on the Type drop-down menu, and find Detect Edges. You'll, you'll notice that that's the only one you can actually click, at, uh, click on at the moment, all the others are greyed out. I will show you how to use a couple of those later, so don't worry. Um, so, as you can see right now, it hasn't traced it particularly well. So, you want to have a little play around with the threshold and tolerance sliders. Um, the threshold slider controls um, the tonal range of what's uh, been selected. So with this, it doesn't really matter where it's on it because I've just got a black and white image, so I can leave it anywhere I want. The tolerance, on the other hand, uh, controls the simplicity of the path and how many um, points are on there. So you'll see the, uh, the further up it goes, the worse it gets. That looks absolutely rubbish. So with this one, as it's a simple geometric uh, pattern, I want it right at the bottom. So that looks good. And also, if you've got an uh, image with uh, quite a few uh, inside edges that you want filled in as well, like I have here, uh, you can click the Include Inside Edges checkbox, and there we go, sorted. Um, also, this Invert, that just inverts it, obviously. I don't want that. There we go. Uh, this one up here, the Inset Frame, I don't need to use that at the moment. Uh, but it is quite useful for when you're using images, uh, photos, because they've, uh, they'll have feathered edges, and this basically takes it inside the path, so cuts out that feathered edge. So I'll, sh I'll just show you here. Put two mil on it. Ugh. There we go. Put it back there. Sorted. Okay. So once you're happy, click OK. And there you have it. You can even, if you use the white arrow, you can tweak it, and um, make any little, little changes you want. So there you go. Now, that's not the end of it. Um, I'd quite like my QR code to be a different color. Maybe the same color as these accents I've got over here. So going to swatches, click that. There we go, the green one. Ah, that's not what I want, is it? Okay, so there is a way around this. I've got another trick up my sleeve. So if you go, I highlight the object again, go back up to object, go to clipping path, and this time the convert clipping path to frame is now uh, black. So click that, and there you have it. What it's done is it's done, uh, it's made a vector silhouette of my object pretty much. Um, so I can now even just delete the image out of it and there it is sorted lovely look at that doesn't that look good um, 
So yeah, this is effectively just a vector file now, and um, I I can do anything I want. I can make it different swatches. I can even put put a photo inside it, which uh, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? But it's it's not really going to work as a QR code now, so it's a bit counterproductive. So I'll just change it back to back to how it was. Lovely. Okay. Let me take you on to the next page where we've got um, where we've got Betty, one of the build resident cats, lying rather suggestively on the floor. I want to cut her out of the background so that she's displayed on this nice uh, pink background, which I think would complement her skin tone rather well. So let's give that a go. Here we are. Options and get that out of the way. No, it's gone to tech edges. Right, we've got a problem here. Uh, because of all the uh, conflicting tones, everything's so similar, and it's uh, it's confusing the detect uh, detect edges quite a lot. And well, it's just not working at all, is it? Even if I put the tolerance up, or that's just not working. Okay, so don't worry, we have a uh, a solution for this. What I'm going to use is uh, combine the powers of InDesign with the powers of Photoshop. So, in true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. So I've taken the image of Betty, um, gone into the Paths window over here, and made a new path by clicking the New Path. Uh, then I got the pen tool and traced around Betty like that. Uh, what you want to do then is save it out as an EPS file and go back into InDesign, I'll delete this one, and place in my EPS. There we go. And here she is again. Okay, uh, at first glance, it looks exactly the same. However, if you click on it, go back into clipping path options, and this time select Photoshop path. And there you go. Click OK. Pow. Sorted. Let's just make her a bit bigger for now. And there you have it. Uh, that brings us to the end of our tutorial. Hopefully you'll be now be enlightened to the mysterious ways of clipping paths. And I hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as I have. Cheers then.